Welcome to Jessica's Excel Law Class Number 2. Hey, and this exercise here, we want to see how to build a child support payment template. So we can take any client, put their name up here, uh, say what the beginning balance, monthly payments, and monthly interest rate, and then create a little uh, template of the schedule of payments and what is due. We're going to do some formatting and some formulas in this video. Now here's uh, some raw data we typed in. First thing, just like in our uh, first video, let's center this across the top. Instead of using the uh, home merge and center, which uh, there are some problems with that, we're going to use center cross selection. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for format cells dialog box, control one, control one. And then we get to alignment and under text alignment horizontal, there it is, center across selection. An alternative to merge and center that has uh, fewer problems in the long run. Now it doesn't look like we need a wrap text, but I usually like to wrap it just in case it gets too long. It'll, it'll automatically add a new line. Now we're going to add some dark uh, background color or fill for the cell. So I'm going to go to font since the fill will be dark. I'm going to use font and I'm going to use a very light color. Then I can go to Fill. I'm going to select some dark color. Finally, I want to go to Border. This is exactly like we did in our last video and Outline. Nothing like a little repetition to uh, remember this. Click OK. Now, before we do our formulas down here, I want to differentiate uh, these labels here from all this stuff up here. This, in essence, is going to be our assumption area. These are the numbers we uh, will change and our formulas will update. That's why these are called formula inputs. So here's some labels for our uh, table of formulas. And I'm going to highlight a range that not is not right next to each other because I'm going to do the same formatting to all these cells. It's faster than doing the highlighting this formatting and then highlighting this separately. And the way you do that is you use the control key. So I highlight that, hold control, and then highlight that. I'm going to control one, fill, just pick a dark color, and then font. I'm going to select a light color. By the way, you can, uh, I'm going to unminimize this. You could use the, these buttons up here also. I have this minimized because uh, the video is kind of small and that takes up a lot of real estate. Now, with any cell with something in it selected, I want to select the whole table and I add borders. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control A, Control A. Then I'm going to go up to Home and there it is. Click on that little drop down and there it is, All Borders. Next, I'd like to add a number formatting. Since all of these are going to be dollar amounts, I'm going to highlight that whole range. There's the selection cursor. Click and drag. Uh, I'm going to use Control-1 again. In our last video, we saw how we could do some number formatting some from up here. I'm going to Control-1. Control-1 and going to number, you have more control over what you can do here. There's many more things available here. I'm going to select currency. In our last video, we select accounting. Accounting had that nice fixed dollar sound on the outside of the cell, as we saw in our last video. This one, I'm going to use currency. Look here, we can decide what kind of, uh, how the negative should be displayed, and also whether to have a symbol or what kind of symbol it might be, and also the decimal places, more control than uh, the currency button up there. Click OK. Now we have four columns. We have to do support two each month, 750 is due. And then we have to calculate accrued arrearage. That means how much you owe from the past and monthly interest. Here's our formula for accrued arrearage. But we won't look up there. We'll just do it from common sense. All right, now watch this. This whole column needs 750. So I'm going to type equals and then click on this cell right here. All right. Now, in our last video, we learned about relative cell references. Right now, this is a relative cell reference. It's looking one, two, three, four, five cells above the cell with the formula, right? Relative cell reference. So when I hold Control and tap Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell highlighted, and I'm going to point to my little fill handle right there, and when I move my cursor and see my uh, crosshair or angry rabbit, I click and drag. Now that copies whatever it is, whether it's a formula or formatting or, or uh, oh, text or whatever. Now let's click in this cell here and learn what the problem is. I'm going to hit the F2 key for edit. The problem is that's a relative cell reference. 
one, two, three, four, five. When you copy it, it's always going to see five cells above. So what do we have to do? I'm going to delete all these. We have to do it by hand, right? Click that one and then hit enter. Type in equal sign, click on that one, type enter. Now that gets pretty boring, equals B3. Now if there was a way to just build our formula up here and lock the cell reference, then we could just copy it down. As we saw just a moment ago, uh, our B3, uh, which was five above, won't really work. So watch this, here's how you do it. You type equals, you click on the B3, and you got to put the secret code in which says uh, to, tells Excel this is locked. So as we copy it down, it's locked on B3. Hit the F4 key. The F4 key slaps the secret code in. Those dollar signs are arbitrary. It's not arbitrary that there's two. The column reference B is locked and the row reference 3 because that ref that is in row 3. So both of them are locked. Dollar signs are arbitrary, but once you put them in, that thing is locked. Control Enter. Now I'm going to use my double click trick. I'm going to double click the fill handle with my Angry Rabbit and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. That is awesome. Saves a lot of time. I don't have to keep typing that B3 in. Now, a crude uh, arrearage. Well, first off, let's just go equals and get our opening balance. And then tab. And monthly interest is going to be, hey, whatever the accrued arrearage is, times our monthly interest rate. We'll come back and edit that formula right there in just a moment. For this month, it's 10, because 1,000 times 1% 1 is 10. Now, here's the common sense. You're not going to look up here. Just pretend you don't see that. What in the world do they owe? Paid, well, that's a minus. Amount due, well, that's a plus. Balance from the past, yeah, that's a plus. Interest, yeah, that's a plus. So we can just do it in any order. Adding and subtracting is commutative, means you can do it in any order. So I'm just going to say, hey, I want this plus this plus this minus this, because that's a plus, that's a plus, that's a plus. You can do it in any order. Now, in our last video, we saw how to use the sum function. That doesn't really apply here, because these cells are not next to each other. In the last video, we did a range for our sum function, but these are not next to each other, so you really kind of have to use your pluses and minuses. Now, I'm going to Control Enter. Right? Are th Let me put it back in edit mode. Are those all relative? When I copy this down, does it always need to look one cell to my left, two cell to my left? You bet. And how about the arrearage from the month before? You bet. How about the monthly interest from the month before? You bet. So those are relative cell references. Control Enter. Let's do our double click, send it down. Now, that's not right. Let's go to the last cell and hit F2 because, ding, 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 that one is not right right there. So uh, we're going to have to come up here and amend this. I want to hit the F4 key. I'm sorry, F2 key to put it in edit mode. And what was our trick? As we copy this down, we always need it looking one cell to my left, whatever the arrearage is for the month, times locked B4. So I'm going to, with my cursor touching this, this B4 somewhere, that cell reference, hit the F4 key to put those two dollar signs in. Control Enter. Now we can use our double click and send it down trick. Now I'm going to come to the last cell and hit F2 for um, edit. And sure enough, if that's not Excel magic, I don't know what is. Saved us a lot of time. Imagine if we had to type this out on a calculator. It is properly looking at whatever this month's accrued arrearage is uh, and multiplied by that cell, which is locked on that 1%. All right, uh, that's number two. We have uh, one more. Uh, Excel and Law video coming up. See you next video.